Having removed the cassette transport, let's have a look at the way that the various other boards are attached to the unit. Should you need to remove any of these parts for cleaning, soldering, that kind of thing. We can see that most of these controls have some sort of attachment from the front of this panel. These two screws here are going to correspond to this pair of boards here. And this seems to be the mounting for the user switches, whereas this is the control system. Yep. Power switch is here, there's no detachable wires there. So you can see that there are brass spacers here as well, probably of roughly the same size that we had in the top corners from the front. I'm not going to be removing every single one of these, I'll just give you an idea of where things are. Here you've got the spring mounted button and that sort of triggers off the lever for the hydraulic system that opens the cassette door. It seems to be just a single screw holding that in place. Sorry, it's difficult to get the camera in there, but it's under there. Uh, there's no spacer for that one. I may as well detach these cables just now. So we've got a double-ended yellow and white cable going up to this core playback amplifier board from this control board. And then got the red and black one here. That seems to be terminating under this board, which is the rectification and filtration of the AC input. Black and white one here. Where's that going? Right, some kind of jack socket here. What's that? Remote foot switch. Here's our auto stop button. Basically, as far as I can make it, once this mechanical counter is at zero, then there's going to be a... Yeah, it closes a, a little switch inside this contraption. And if this switch is also in the correct position and that's going to send a signal to the auto stop solenoid so that when this hits zero the cassette player stops automatically. We can see that the red and blue cables are connected to these pins here, that's the top left one and the blue is to the one immediately below that. I say that because when I opened this up that was actually detached, I've resoldered it. We've got brass spacers attaching that in addition to the screws. The mechanical counter itself is attached by two adjacent screws which are both mounted from the rear of this panel. I wish more of the screws in this were rear mounted. And then below that we've got the switches for the monitor buttons. Sorry, I know the light's not that good. We can see that there's brass spacers for those screws and uh, they're mounted from the front there. Every one of these rotary controls, you can see there's a pin that goes into a slot on the front chassis, but then there's a washer and a nut, and they're all soldered directly to this main record amplifier printed circuit board. I think apart from removing those nuts and washers at the front, the only screw that I can see attaching this to the chassis elsewhere is through this shield here. So I think if we remove that, all of these nuts and washers, then we could pinch the end of these white plastic tabs. You close them with a pair of pliers and then lift the board up and then it would come away from those corners. For cleaning purposes, however, we do actually have adequate access to these. Uh, you can see you know, the recesses on these. And um, if these were scratchy, uh, we could squirt contact cleaner on there, um, agitate the pot a bit, blow it out with compressed air, repeat the process a few times and finish off with this lubricant in there. And uh, that would get those clean. The meter board, there is a little plug here and uh, you know that's that's running to our rectifier filter board so that'll be how the bulbs are getting the power. You can see that it's attached from the rear to the chassis via this plate. The lip if you end up taking that off it's going to be pointing upwards. What I mean is you could end up turning that at 180 degrees and picking it through there and wondering why the screws aren't long enough. And you can see without the plate it's quite loose but the um, the front plate has a role in holding those in place. The signal wires are actually soldered directly into the board, so there's nothing to detach there. Take this out in a minute, see if any of these cables are detachable and headers underneath, but I suspect they may be wired in. You can see that these panels are screws from the outside, but then there's um, nuts on the rear. Uh, these plates themselves aren't machined with a groove for the ferrule. Right, I'll get that board out we'll have a, a look at it in case there's anything hiding under there that I didn't anticipate. We can't really see 
There must be a daughter board for all these sockets. So we'll have a look at that, see how that's attached. If you're removing these, something to note is that the washers and nuts on these two tier controls, the brass base are of a slightly different size to these ones, so we'll keep them separate. These switches are soldered directly to this board down here, and the wires are pretty short, so if we're gonna take this board out, which I am, then we do definitely need to remove the switches. So it's a pair of washered screws that go directly into the housing of the switch from the front, and this little bit rubber dust catcher thing slips over there. That's the screw that came out, very short with a washer, a small screwdriver, so we far has been used on these and on the little screws on the transport, but everything else has been the larger size. The board still not coming away. I suspect there's stuff underneath holding it in, so I've removed this panel on the bottom, six short wide ferrule screws. You can see then that there are an additional one, two, three of these plastic clips from the rear holding it in, and also this screw is probably passing through to that electrical shield that we already saw, but from this side. So I'll try and remove those. Just removing these two plastic clips seems to have done it. This one, I don't know whether that's actually detached from the board. I'll have a look from the other side. This screw is definitely, I can feel underneath there's just a, a brass sort of spacer there, so we don't need to remove that. I'm disappointed to see that there's no annotations of the circuit on this side of the board either. That's quite unusual. I haven't really seen a board where they didn't at least have part numbers, so that in conjunction with a schematic, the service engineer could see what they were doing. Unfortunately, um, I've seen enough of these boards to have a rough idea of what's going on anyway. So when I come to trouble shooting the fourth channel, which doesn't seem to be producing any sound, whereas the other three are, then I'll know what to do, maybe. Uh, we can also see that this daughter board with the jack sockets on it is wired directly to this board. There's no detachable plugs. So in order to get the whole thing out, then I will uh, loosen off these nuts and bolts. Removing the screws from this pair of boards here, the transport control. Two different kinds of screw. The one on that side beside the power switch, so on your left, if this was the right way up, is wide ferrule and short. Uh, the one on the other side, closer to the input jacks, so on your right, if this was the right way up, is narrow ferrule and much longer, over two centimetres long. I figure I'm going to need to remove this plate if I need to access any of this for soldering, which I probably will because of the one problem channel. So I've just removed uh, four short wide ferrule screws from these holes where the arrows are. Note that this one, that's your green and yellow, which is your UK regulation earth cable going to the earth cable in the mains. So a lot of these that I deal with the earth pin on the three prong plug isn't attached but uh, this one does have a earth going to the mains. We can also see this turned up that actually only that pin there was holding this PCB attached to here. Uh, this one that I removed is just the other side of this clip that we already removed pinched in from the other side. So Actually, if you want to access the other side of this, the quickest thing to do is to just unplug all three clips from this side and leave the clips on the other side of that PCB in situ. And we can see quite clearly now that these cables going to sockets at the back are um, soldered directly into the underside of the board. So if you need to do any soldering here, what I suggest is since these knobs can be cleaned without detaching those. With hindsight, I would have just left all those nuts and washers on uh, without this plate and those plastic clips. It's a little bit unstable, but as long as you're fairly gentle, you could move that out of the way and that would just be suspended there by the strength of those connections. And you can sort of flip the entire unit around 180 degrees, depending whether you need to access this side for soldering or that side for signal tracing. Connections to the transformer look like they would pull out. I think the likelihood of finding the correct type of transformer with the cor correct kind of connects is pretty low, so I don't see any advantage to showing you that. So probably what I will do now is um, reattach these so that this is sitting sort of at 90 degrees. I'll probably leave that dangling like that. Put the meters back up out of the way. If I remove that screw and two white 
clips here then this regulation board can sit off the side i'll need to be somewhat careful with that because the power coming into it is from the secondary side of the transformer so it'll be much lower ac voltages than are coming out of the wall but still potentially damaging to components if not myself so i'll need to be careful about where i put it but yeah i'll try and get this back to a situation where it's somewhat easy to do tracing and soldering tasks